for thousands of years we were independent, living on our own, trading and traveling to others, governed only by the chiefs of our own people. We had no need to become a part of the modern world. But one fateful day changed everything. In 1521, Ferdinand Magellan explored the Pacific Ocean. It was then that he discovered Guam. Years later, Miguel Lopez de Legazpi claimed Guam for Spain for its strategic location. For the 377 years under Spanish rule, the people of Guam had no representation in their government. Their very own lives were governed by people that didn't even know them. A group of tomorrow saw this as an injustice and decided to fight back. Barao, a popular chief at the time, spoke a few words before the attack. Freedom is dearer to us than life itself. These words sparked a fire in the Chamorros. It was the truth, and they would continue to fight many times after that in order to secure a freedom for their future. In 1898, Guam and other territories were transferred to United States jurisdiction via the Treaty of Paris, which ended the Spanish-American War. This change seemed like a fresh start from the Spanish occupation. But Article 9 of the treaty stated that the civil and political rights of the native inhabitants are hereby ceded to the United States, shall be determined by Congress. This meant that once again, the Chamorros had returned to being controlled by another country that did not give them citizenship or representation in their government. Immediately following the treaty, Naval Officer Richard Leary was sent to Guam to govern it. For the next 60 years, the highest naval officer in the area would govern Guam. During this period of naval rule, many rights were restricted from the Chamorros. Naval Executive Order 243 prohibited the speaking of their native languages in public places such as schools and baseball fields. Naval Executive Order No. 3 limited the religious life of the people by prohibiting the celebration of Catholic St. Feast Days. This order greatly disturbed many residents whose families had been practicing Catholicism for over 300 years. In order to see some change on the island, the Chamorros needed to gain U.S. citizenship in order to be protected by the Bill of Rights and U.S. Constitution. In 1949, the Guam House of Assembly conducted a walkout protest. This major event is considered as one of the first toward the people's self-determination because it had pressured President Harry S. Truman to sign the Organic Act of Guam. The Organic Act ushered in many changes that affected their independence by granting the people with a presidentially appointed local governor, a locally elected unicameral legislature, and their very own court system. All residents and babies born on Guam from then on received U.S. citizenship and a limited Bill of Rights. This gave Guam a sort of midway political status. They were not granted ultimate assimilation into the U.S. as a state, but were granted U.S. citizenship and a few rights. In June 1, 1969, the 10th Guam Legislature funded a constitutional convention tasked with the purpose of proposing and eventually making changes to the Organic Act. Of the 34 proposed changes, only one was approved by Congress and added into the Act. This was the right of the Chamorros to vote for their own civilian governor. In December 14, 1960, the United Nations passed Resolution 1514. This resolution granted independence to colonial countries and peoples. This resolution pressured nations all over the world to give their territories the right to choose what affiliation they wanted. In 1986, the U.S. ended their trust territory with the Pacific Islands of Kashrai, Ponpe, Chuk, and Yap all of which became independent countries as a result. The Northern Mariana Islands, however, opted for a commonwealth. Guam and several other territories were not given this privilege of choice. In July of 1977, a second constitutional convention was convened. This time, it was tasked with drafting a constitution to change the political relationship that Guam had with the United States. In one year, the constitution was completed and approved on the federal level. Although Congress had approved of it, the local population voted against it in a 1977 referendum. The Chamorros that rejected it claimed that it did not adequately address Chamorro rights or their affiliation with the United States. 
During this time, Governor Paul Calvo passed Bill 417, hoping that it would solve the predicament. This bill created the Commission on Self Determination and tasked it with the duty of figuring out what political status was favored among the population. Instead of solving the problem quickly and effectively, it caused numerous more problems, such as what statuses were open to Guam and who were considered the self in self determination. After many years of discussion, the Commission was able to define the self by using the United Nations principle on decolonization. Those eligible to participate in the referendum were locals and their descendants born after the passing of the Organic Act in 1950. The Commission then agreed that the best possible status to attain was a Commonwealth, similar to that of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. The Commonwealth status would grant the people with many privileges. Such as immigration laws and self governance, while still maintaining a healthy relationship with the United States. This Commonwealth Act was drafted under the administration of Governor Ricardo Berzalio, Joseph Ada, and Carl Guterres. The Chamorros have urged this change in the form of activist groups like Pada Pada, the People's Alliance for Responsive Alternatives, and the People's Alliance for Dignified Alternatives, and the OPIR. Organization for People's Indigenous Rights. The local news station, KUAM, has also covered this issue numerous times on their program. And that it's time, it's time to modernize the relationship between Guam and the United States as far as political status. Today on Guam, with many of our elders growing old, many measures have been taken to ensure that the quest is continued. Just in 2012, The Gannett Foundation received grants from the Pacific Daily News and Guam Preservation Trust to create 20 entries about Guam governance. Guampedia, the Encyclopedia of Guam, has asked various writers to compile some work to tell the history of self determination in Guam. These works remain open to all people, of Guam and not, to be informed of the past trials and tribulations in achieving this goal. The roadblocks and the challenges. That we find、um, is getting people to understand fully、uh, why、uh, the exercise of self determination for our future is so fundamental to the kind of life and the kind of community that we will have in the future. From the research I've conducted, I now understand the rights I take for granted today were fought for. And are the very product of a long and difficult battle led by my elders. They sacrificed so much and put their well being on the line, just as the chiefs and warriors had centuries before, in order to secure a freedom for their future, our future. The key to ensuring our self determination begins with self. We ourselves need to carry the responsibility of ensuring that our children and their children. And all the children after us will finally be given that right of consent, the ability to choose, the ability to determine their livelihood.